so in the last video we had learned and concluded that the both aspects of a transaction have equal value one aspect is the debit aspect the other aspect is the credit aspect the debit aspect was also called if you remember the debit aspect was also called the receiving aspect and the credit aspect was also called the sacrificing aspect and in the last video we also learned that under the debit aspect we write all uh, uh, under the debit aspect we group all losses expenses and assets and under the credit aspect we group all liabilities incomes and gains now let us try to move a bit into this equation by arranging the things a bit and using some simple arithmetic so this equation can be rewritten as if we take these assets to the left hand side if we keep the assets to the left hand side we have assets equal to then we have liabilities plus incomes plus gains minus we have minus the losses which we if we carry the losses from the left hand side to the right hand side the positive will become a negative and so we have a minus losses and again minus expenses minus expenses so let us concentrate on this part if we group this part in the parenthesis if we group this part we can always give it a different name can you think about what we can call this portion of the equation here you can see that we are adding up all the incomes and gains and we are subtracting all the losses and expenses from those income and gains so this part can also be called as net profit so now the equation can be rewritten as assets equal to liabilities plus net profit now let us analyze the liabilities a bit let us analyze the liabilities a bit so the liabilities can be divided or bifurcated into two parts these liabilities can be bifurcated into two parts which are either external liabilities I will explain what an external liability is external liabilities and internal liabilities so liabilities has been divided into two parts external liabilities and internal liabilities where external liabilities are the liabilities which a business owes to lenders creditors creditors uh, I mean in a sense the if a business owes anything to the outsiders it is called an external liability but if a business owes anything to its owners so internal liability is related to the owners and this internal liability is also called also called owners equity it is also called owners equity so now if we rewrite the equation again then we will have just a second then we will have have assets equal to external liabilities plus owners equity plus your net profit and now this part the owners equity and net profit part can also be called capital because this part is the part which is the owners contribution to the business as in owners equity is the part that the owner has invested in the business 
and net profit is a part that business has earned but it belongs to the owner so it will be finally added back to the owner's equity or either it will be drawn by the proprietor so let us assume it is not drawn it is retained in the business so it will be finally added back to the owner's equity and this total and this part combined is known as capital so finally we, we arrive at the equation as assets equal to external liabilities by the word liabilities we actually mean external liabilities so we can knock off this word out here so we can write simply that assets equal to liabilities plus capital so this we arrived out here this equation we arrived in out here is called accounting equation it is called the accounting equation and basically all rules of accountancy are dependent on this this accounting equation one more significant point that I missed to discuss in the beginning is that let me scroll a bit upward is that here we can see that under the umbrella of the debit aspect we have losses expenses and assets so we s we uh, mean by this that losses expenses and assets will always be debited but sometimes but this is only true when the value of them increase when the value of this losses expenses and assets move in the positive direction that is the value increases but in case where the value of these components that is losses expenses and assets are actually decreasing instead of increasing which is not practical in case of losses and expenses because you cannot have negative expenses and you cannot have negative losses but in case of an asset it is possible that you have a reduction in the value of an asset so in that case it will come just under the opposite aspect that is the credit or the sacrificing aspect I hope this is not confusing to you let me make it very clear that losses expenses and assets are actually under the umbrella of the debit aspect but if there is a any downward movement in the value of these three components if the value of losses decrease if the value of expenses actually decrease if the value of assets actually decrease then they will come under the credit or the sacrificing aspect similarly for the credit aspect we have liabilities incomes and gains and this rule is true when there is an increase in the value of liabilities incomes and gains so if actually there is an decrease if actually there is a decrease then these components will come under the debit aspect so basically the rule which I have explained that losses expenses and assets come under the umbrella of the debit and liabilities incomes and gains come under the umbrella of the credit is actually true when their values are increasing but in case when their values are decreasing they will just switch their positions the assets with a decreasing value an asset with a decreasing value will come under the credit or the sacrificing aspect because the value of your asset is decreasing so you are sacrificing something similarly if your liability is decreasing it is similar to an increase in your asset a decrease in your liability is similar or has equal meaning of an increase in an asset so it will come in the um, under the umbrella of the debit aspect I hope you are understanding what I am trying to say in case of losses and expenses generally there cannot be a negative movement in the value the value cannot go down generally because we cannot have negative losses or negative expenses and in case of incomes and gains also the value cannot be in a ne uh, generally the value cannot move in a negative direction because we cannot also have negative incomes and gains but in case of assets and liabilities there can be both ways movement of the value the value of an asset can either increase 
the value of an asset can either increase or the value of an asset can either decrease similarly the value of a liability can either increase or the value of a liability can either decrease so this rule that when the value of an asset increases it will come under the debit aspect and if by some by some means the value of the asset decreases then it will come under the credit aspect similarly for liability if there is an increase in value of liabilities it will come under the credit aspect but if by any chance there is a decrease in the liability it will come under the debit aspect let me explain to you by an example for example say for example say you buy a car for rupees 1 lakh via a bank loan via a bank loan so in this transaction you are receiving a car and you are incurring a liability in the way in the form of a bank loan so the receiving or the debit aspect since the value of an asset is increasing because you did not had any car before and now you have a new car the value of your assets are increasing so the debit aspect would be the car which is an asset and the value is moving in the positive direction that is increasing by rupees 1 lakh and in the in the uh, credit aspect we have the bank loan which is a liability and if you see the value of the liability is also in an upward direction because because we, you didn't had this liability before this transaction once this transaction happened that is you bought the car using the bank loan you incurred a new liability for rupees 1 lakh so there is a upward movement in the value of assets and liabilities so in this case where there is an upward movement in the value of the asset it will always be a debit and where is a upward movement in the value of the liability there will be a credit there will be a credit so now la let's just reverse the transaction let's say for example after two days of use you didn't find the car very useful for you and you return it to the the showroom from where you got it and uh, the bank loan is also waived off so car is returned and bank loan is waived off so now what happens now the value of the assets which was rupees 1 lakh 1 lakh sorry for the bad handwriting the value of the car which was 1 lakh is now gone so there is a decrease in the value of the asset that is the car so now this asset will not fall under the debit aspect but it will be credited since the asset value of the asset is moving in a negative or downward direction it is decreasing now this aspect or the car will be credited and since the liability is also waived off now you do not have this liability in the form of a bank loan the liability which you have is now gone value of the liability has actually come down by rupees 1 lakh so the liability has also come down which was the bank loan so it has to be debited so the only I hope I could make this thing this thing clear to you that this rule that losses expenses and assets are debited always and liabilities incomes and gains are created always holds true for the positive movement in their values for the increase in their values but if there is a decrease anyhow which is not possible in case of losses and expenses and incomes and gains but is possible in case of assets and liabilities if there is a decrease then 
the effect will just be the opposite instead of debit the downward movement of value in losses expenses and assets will actually be a credit and similarly in case of a downward movement in the value of liabilities incomes and gains instead of being a credit it will be a debit i hope i could make you understand the concept which was which i was trying to push towards you if you have any feedback or any queries you can give it in the comments below thank you for watching friends before signing off i'd like you to take a look at this chart where i have established or where i have written down the rules for debit and credit with respect to a transaction here you can see that for losses expenses and assets for every increase in their value you have to, you have to write them in the debit aspect and for a decrease in their value you have to write them in the credit aspect and for just the opposite for the liabilities incomes and gains for every increase in their value you have to write them in the credit aspect and for every decrease in their value you have to write them in the debit aspect